Applying Properties of Integer Exponents, Lesson 2.1c. We're going to talk about some of the rules for exponents. The multiplication property of exponents is also called the product rule for exponents. It states when multiplying like bases, we add the exponents. We have 4 to the second power multiplied to 4 to the third power. We just add the 2 and the 3 to get 4 to the fifth power. Aside from the product rule for exponents, there are three power rules for exponents. The first one, we have some number a raised to the m power in parentheses, then raised to the n power. That's the power of a power. We just multiply these two exponents together. We would have a to the m times n. See how it's in parentheses? So we would just multiply those exponents. So an example would be 2 to the third power raised to the fourth power. We would have 2 to the 3 times 4. That is 12, so we would have 2 to the 12th power. For the second power rule for exponents, we've got two integers inside of the parentheses, a times b raised to the m power. This m goes to each inside the parentheses. So we have a to the m multiplied to b to the m. So an example would be 2 times 5 in parentheses raised to the third power, and that's equal to 2 to the third power times 5 to the third power. For the third power rule for exponents, we have a quotient. We have division, don't we, as a fraction? It's a divided by b, and they're raised to the m power. Again, because they're on the inside of the parentheses, this m exponent affects both of them. So we have a to the m over b to the m. An example would be 2 thirds raised to the fourth power. That would be 2 to the fourth power divided by 3 to the fourth power. And just for a little extra information, this can also be read as the quotient of 2 to the fourth power and 3 to the fourth power. That brings us to the quotient rule for exponents. It states for any non-zero number, a, and any integers, m and n, those would be the exponents, we subtract. We've got like bases here. And because fractions are little division problems, this would be quotient. We have a to the m over a to the n. It would be like a to the m divided by a to the n. Since we have a like base, we can just do a to the m minus n. We subtract. An example would be the quotient of 2 to the 5th and 2 to the 3rd powers. We have like bases here. They're both a 2. We just do 5 minus 3. We have 2 to the 5 minus 3 power. That's going to give us 2 to the 2nd power. And the zero exponent rule states for any non-zero number, we would have a non-zero number a raised to the zero power, it's going to equal 1. And it cannot be zero, so a is not equal to zero. An example would be 12 to the zero power is equal to 1. And we're going to discuss the zero exponent rule more in the next lesson, 2.1d. Remember, when cross-canceling, we use their greatest common factor, the GCF, to multiply quickly and reduce the product. We know 11 times 3 is 33 and 9 times 3 is 27, so the greatest common factor will be a 3. We cross them out. We have 11 threes here, 9 threes here. We get 11 ninths, and that simplifies to a 9 ninths plus 2 ninths, right? Same numerator and denominator, so that's one whole. We have 1 and 2 ninths. Using the order of operations, we do parentheses first, then exponents. 7 minus 5 is 2. We have 2 to the third power. 4 minus 1 is 3. We have 3 raised to the zero power. Now, since these are like bases and we're multiplying them together, we can just add their exponents using the multiplication property of exponents, also known as the product rule for exponents, or we can write it out as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 32. We just add 32 plus 1, and we have 33.
When there is more than one set of grouping symbols, we begin with the innermost set first. We have brackets, then we have parentheses, and we do inside the parentheses first, that's the innermost grouping symbol, that's 4 plus 1, that gives us a 5, and it's raised to the second power. And then outside of these brackets, it's raised to the second power. It's over 5 minus 2 raised to the second power. So for the numerator, we're going to have 5 raised to the second power raised to the second power. For here, we have 3 raised to the second power. 5 minus 2 is 3. Now we can do the exponents. 5 to the second power is 25. And 3 to the second power is 9. We've got 25 raised to the second power over 9. We do 25 times 25 and get 625. So we know that's the numerator and it's over 9, the denominator. We divide and do 625 divided by 9 and we get 69 and 4 ninths. Notice that the remainder is the numerator and the divisor is the denominator. Now we learned about that way back in fifth grade math 2.7. If you missed that, I'm going to have a link in this description so you can see that real quick. Always remember, begin with the innermost grouping symbols first. Here we have brackets and braces and parentheses as grouping symbols. We're going to start in the very center first with the 2 plus 1. That's a 3. Now it's telling us to add 2 to this. So we have 2 plus 3. That's a 5. We slowly worked our way outward with the grouping symbols. These, inside of these braces, were raised to the second power. That means 5 is raised to the second power. Then it was raised to the third power. And we can use the power rule to multiply the 2 times 3. We have 5 raised to the 2 times 3, which is 5 raised to the 6th power. That means we have 5 as a factor 6 times. That's equal to 15,625. Okay, we finished this lesson. We have one more lesson called zero and negative exponents that is at the end of all of this in the going further section. If you haven't already, you might want to take a screenshot of this product rule for exponents and the three power rules and the quotient rule for exponents. It might help you for your notes. Please join me for the last part of the lesson, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.